U.S. President Donald Trump takes on U.S. Representatives Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar. A American Jews stuck between a rock and hard place. Photo credit Reuters Donald Trump's resemblance to the biblical Ahasuerus was clear from the day he entered the White House but this week he made the book of Esther read like his reality's pale imitation. The tweeting version of the impressionable, unpredictable and impulsive emperor of 127 realms arrived in our midst replete with a wife cast as Vashti, the queen whose job is to glamour, a daughter who plays Esther, the beautiful Jewish princess, a son-in-law who plays Mordecai the Viceroy and the revolving door through which a succession of political eunuchs, from Rex Tillerson and Steve Bannon to James Mattis and Herbert McMaster, emerge and vanish as swiftly as Harper and a Big Thun and Terish do in the Megilla. This week initially seemed like any other in the palace, launched with one tweet reprimanding the Federal Reserve Chairman for his horrendous lack of vision and Another charging Google with manipulating from 2.6 to 16 million votes for Hillary Clinton, all of which came peppered with a bid to buy Greenland. It's been this way for three years, and the world has grown accustomed to dismissing such bizarrities as harmless entertainment. The answer to former Danish Prime Minister Hella Thorning Schmidt's question following the Greenland bit, is this some sort of joke, was an emphatic, yes, yes, like the Megillah's script it's all been one long joke, until new protagonists barged into the plot and transformed it, from low-brow burlesque to Jewish tragedy. The congressional duo that sparked Trump's wrath is indeed a pair of hypocrites he did well to expose. The two obviously seek Israel's disappearance, and their anti-Semitic undertones scorn the values of the country where they achieved a political stardom that, in the Arab world that their families abandoned, is unthinkable. Ilhan Omar's cutting, that she had no idea what she was inferring when she said Israel hypnotized the world, was as transparent as her statement about the Benjamins meaning American Jewry's money, that fueled US support of Israel. Rashid Tlaib's mention of dual loyalty, if even technically aimed at non-Jewish lawmakers, could only have been made with full knowledge of where that terminology comes from, and where it led. Now, in line with the era's piling paradoxes, Trump has effectively joined their vitriol even while lambasting it, when he labeled as disloyal Jews who failed to join his attack on that couple. Yes, Trump has Jewish her children and probably never meant to sound the way he sounded. Heaven knows the man often has no idea what he says. Still, he activated the senses with which we Jews scan such rhetoric's potential interpretation and its ability to spread this fast and run that deep. That is why, in terms of American Jewry's future, what matters most is not what Tlaib, Omar and Trump said, but the audiences that sprawl beyond them, namely, working-class Christians and immigrant Muslims. Like classic anti-Semitism, the anti-Jewish energy our era is gathering originated in Europe, where it fused the contradictory forces of Islamism, neo-fascism, and new leftism, all of which exploit the epoch's economic disillusionment and social alienation. In recent years, this configuration has crossed the Atlantic. This column has long argued that the rise of Donald Trump is not the electoral accident US Democrats delude themselves that it is. Rather, it is driven by a critical mass of the population that feels socially disenfranchised, economically threatened, culturally invaded and physically insecure. The absurdity of the sense of invasion is immaterial. What matters is that this is how people in middle America feel. Politicians like Lieb and Omar only intensify these fears, and the poor white fear they provoke is what Trump likely intended to fan when he attacked the two's anti-Israeli record. Did Trump similarly intend to ingratiate the white supremacists for whom the sound of an American president pillorying disloyal Jews was until this week a utopian dream? I don't think so. But for American Jews, the enigma of Trump's intentions is now academic.
What matters is that there is an angry Christian audience in the US that is vulnerable to the kind of anti-Jewish rhetoric Trump just uttered, and at the same time there is also a growing Muslim population that is vulnerable to the vehemence Omar and Talib trumpet from Capitol Hill. Now, with poor whites behind them and poor Muslims ahead of them, many American Jews will be tempted to veer sideways, some to the right, to the cozy company of neoconservative wasps, and some to the left, to the company of anti-Israeli ultra-liberals. Once within these opposite corners, American Jews will fight the anti-Semites they face while also fighting each other. That is a well-tested recipe for defeat. It will mean that American Jewry has forgotten everything and learned nothing from its ancestors' appalling failure to unite in the face of the Holocaust. Yes, we Israelis are also split in myriad ways, politically, socially, economically, religiously, culturally, you name it. However, when faced with a vicious external enemy, we unite. That is what we did on the eve of the Six Day War in 1967 and that is what we did in the face of last decade's suicides war. The question to American jury is therefore this. Can you produce, just for one event, perhaps a march up Fifth Avenue, a united front led by, say, anti-occupation novelist Michael Chabon, pro-settler activist Maud Klein, anti-BB actress Natalie Portman, Republican donor Sheldon Adelson, anti-Israeli linguist Noam Chomsky, Israel advocate Alan Dershowitz, J Street founder Jeremy ben Amy, Rabbi Malkiel Kotler of ultra-Orthodox flagship Lakewood Yeshiva, and Rabbi Jonathan Hecht of Reform Judaism's Hebrew Union College. Can such a cross-section of American Jewry emerge, arms folded, just once, just to jointly stand up to America's anti-Semitic demon, if not for any other reason than simply because, much as some in that row would be so alien to each other, to that demon they're all the same. The fractured community that did not unite even in the face of the Holocaust is set to repeat its forebears mistake var Kant equals back quote join Jerusalem post premium plus now for just five dollars and upgrade your experience with an ads free website and exclusive content. Click here greater than greater than back quote document get element wired link premium inner html equals cont function vi share on facebook share on twitter let's block ads why